In the year 304, Sima E, the king of Changsha, was betrayed by the king of the East Sea, Sima Yu, and subsequently killed by Zhang Feng, a general under the control of Sima Yong, the king of Hejian. Sima Ng, the king of Chengdu, led his troops into Luoyang. Upon reclaiming central power within the Western Jin dynasty, Sima Ng declared himself prime minister, abolishing the original crown prince and appointing himself as the heir to the throne. However, despite holding significant political power, Sima Ng did not remain in the court to oversee government affairs. Instead, he left his trusted general, Shi Chao, in Luoyang, while Sima Ng returned to his fiefdom in Yi City. From there, he remotely controlled central power, expanded local military forces, and strengthened the power of his fiefdom. Sima Ng regarded himself above the emperor, manifesting ambitions to seize the throne at every turn. This not only greatly disappointed the court ministers but also provided other ambitious princes with excuses and opportunities to launch a campaign against him. In the year 304, in July, Sima Yu, the king of the East Sea, sent proclamations in all directions, summoning over a hundred thousand troops and holding Emperor Jin Hui hostage to invade Sima Ying's fiefdom in Yi City. Upon learning of this, Sima Ying was profoundly shocked and desired to escape. Sima Yao, the king of Dong'an, thought that if the emperor personally came to suppress them, they should surrender and plead guilty. However, Sima Ying was unwilling to accept such a failure and refused to surrender. At this point, chaos and panic engulfed Yi City, and news of Sima Ying's attempt to escape reached the government army's main camp. The news of an easy victory without a battle filled the soldiers with joy, as no one was eager for warfare. However, just as the government army relaxed their guard, Sima Ying's general, Shi Chao, led 50,000 soldiers rushing into the government army's main camp from Luoyang. The soldiers of Sima Yu, the king of the East Sea, who had become lax in their defense, were defeated and fled for their lives. Emperor Jin Hui was left on the grass and later escorted to Yi City by Shi Chao. After the battle, Sima Ying immediately executed Sima Yao, the king of Dong'an, who had previously advised him to surrender. Sima Yu, after suffering defeat, fled back to his fiefdom in the Eastern Sea and began accumulating strength within his domain, biding his time for a chance to rise again. Before long, Sima Yu, along with his younger brother Sima Tang, joined forces with the warlord Wang Jun of Yuzhou, leading Xinbei and Wu Huan cavalry to attack Yi City and suppress Sima Ying. The fierce Xinbei and Wu Huan cavalry proved unstoppable, defeating all the Yi City forces that tried to resist. The news of the defeat spread to Yi City, causing widespread panic. Sima Ying, in great distress, abandoned his original plan to defend Yi City with all his might and wait for the arrival of Lu Yuan's Xiongnu cavalry to rescue him. Instead, Sima Ying led only a few dozen riders and hurriedly fled to Luoyang with Emperor Jin Hui. In one night, he lost the stronghold he had painstakingly built over the years in the struggle for control over the Western Jin central government. After the fall of Yi City, the Wuhuan and Xianbei people engaged in widespread looting, burning, and killing, marking the beginning of the involvement of nomadic tribes from the grasslands in the turmoil of the central plains. Not long after the king of Chengdu, Sima Ying, and Emperor Jin Hui fled to Luoyang, Zhang Feng, a prominent general under Sima Yang's control in Luoyang, once again took Emperor Jin Hui, Sima Ying, and others hostage. They were relocated to the region of Guangzhou and Chang'an under Sima Yang's influence to evade the threat posed by the Xianbei and Wuhuan cavalry. Before leaving Luoyang, Zhang Feng allowed the soldiers to indulge in looting, burning, and killing, causing even the imperial palace to be destroyed. Sima Yong, considering Sima Ying to have lost his value as a pawn, deposed him as the heir to the throne and expelled him from the central power of the Western Jin dynasty. Later, on his way to seek refuge with his former general, Gongshi Fan, Sima Ying was unfortunately captured by local warlords and handed over to Marquis of Fanyang, Sima Shao, in Yi City for judgment. Sima Shao only imprisoned Sima Ying and his son, unable to bring himself to harm them. However, over a month later, Marquis of Fanyang, Sima Shao, suddenly died. Concerned that leaving Sima Ying in Yi City could lead to future troubles, his subordinates deceitfully claimed that Emperor Jin Hui had issued a decree ordering Sima Ying's death at the age of 28. Sima Ying's two sons were also killed. In the year 306, the king of the East Sea, Sima Yu, and envoys from various vassal lords in Shandong attempted to persuade Sima Yong to send Emperor Jin Hui back to the capital, Luoyang, and to collaborate on dividing and governing the territories. 
Sima Yong was inclined to follow the advice of the King of the East Sea, Sima Yu, but Zhang Fang disagreed. Later, with the coordination of Xian Bei and Wuhuan cavalry as the vanguard advancing from the west, the army led by Sima Yu in Guangdong made smooth progress, causing Sima Yong to be greatly alarmed. At this point, Sima Yong no longer trusted Zhang Fang, perceiving his actions as an attempt to build up his own military strength. Consequently, Sima Yong resorted to his usual cunning tactics and devised a plan to have Zhang Fang's close friend, Ji Fu, kill Zhang Fang. Sima Yong presented Zhang Fang's severed head to Sima Yu, seeking reconciliation, but Sima Yu firmly refused. He displayed Zhang Fang's head before the army and sent a message to Sima Yong's subordinates, saying, This is the fate of one who served under the king of Hejian. How do you think you will fare compared to Zhang Fang? The garrison commanders surrendered one after another, making Sima Yong realize that killing Zhang Fang was a grave mistake. Frustrated and humiliated, Sima Yong, with no other outlet, redirected his anger towards Ji Fu and had him killed. After losing his commanding general Zhang Fang, Sima Yong's forces suffered defeats in every battle, scattering in disarray. Sima Yong, in a state of panic, abandoned the defense of Chang'an and fled alone into the mountains. The fierce Xinbei cavalry advanced directly into Chang'an, engaging in a frenzy of looting before returning with Emperor Jin Hui to the capital, Luoyang. In the year 306, Sima Yu, using the emperor's name, summoned Sima Yong to the court for an official position. However, on his way to Luoyang, Sima Yong was strangled in his carriage by individuals sent by Sima Yu. A master conspirator, Sima Yong ultimately met his end through intrigue. It's truly both hateful and tragic. On January 8, 307, Emperor Jin Hui, Sima Zhong, suddenly died from food poisoning at the age of 48. Sima Yu, being a distant relative of the Sima royal family, had no possibility of inheriting the throne and no motive for poisoning. Sima Zhong, Emperor Jin Hui, was the half-brother of Sima Chong, who was proclaimed as the third emperor of Western Jin by Sima Yu, becoming Emperor Jin Hui. Emperor Jin Hui, Sima Chong, himself had no ambitions for power, but Sima Yu, the king of the East Sea, controlled the court, executed dissenting ministers, and caused dissatisfaction from Emperor Jin Hui. Meanwhile, the armed forces of nomadic tribes such as the Xiongnu and Xianbei were growing stronger. With internal strife within the court and social unrest, the Western Jin dynasty was on the brink of losing control. In the year 310, in October, Sima Yu voluntarily took on the heavy responsibility of confronting the formidable general Shi Lu, who led the Hanzhou regime, in a campaign against the Xiongnu. He left behind his wife and children, bid farewell to Emperor Jin Huai and took with him the elite central army from the capital, Luoyang. To compensate for the insufficient forces, Sima Yu sent urgent appeals throughout the land, calling on regional military forces to mobilize and rescue the emperor, and to suppress the rebellious forces. However, the regional military forces sought only to defend themselves and were unable to send reinforcements to the emperor in the distant Luoyang. Frustrated and desperate, Emperor Jin Huai issued a decree, publicizing Sima Yu's alleged crimes and calling for all factions to rise against him. Upon hearing this, Sima Yu, overwhelmed with anger, suffered a sudden and severe attack, losing consciousness and never waking up again. The death of Sima Yu, the king of the East Sea, marked the end of the power struggle among the various princes of the Sima royal family in the War of the Eight Princes, where family members killed each other for control of the central government of Western Jin. This internal conflict within the Sima clan not only led to the downfall of Western Jin, but also ignited severe ethnic upheavals for nearly 300 years to come.